Okay, we are up and moving and I get the good part. Mike gets all the science stuff and all the research and all that stuff. So I'm going to take you through some of this stuff. We're going to cruise right through because what we're mainly going to focus on today is how can we take the steps from a clinical perspective to um, give recommendations on some things that, that patients can do right away to feel a little bit better here. Um, I love this quote and it was by uh, Emren Meyer, the director of the UCLA Center for Neuro visceral sciences and the nervous system actually started out in the gut he says okay so my question to you today is we do so much to protect the brain right what are we doing on a daily basis to protect our gut okay every day we have a choice and decisions to make um, as far as, as the health, health of our gut. So you know, kind of know a little bit of the background now after Mike got up here speaking about the importance of it and how they're very much connected. Okay, Mike had this exact same thing and we're gonna talk about it kind of as, as a two lane highway, north, south, south, uh, north, and how it, it brings in everything from our, our inner nervous system to our cognitive, to our emotions, to our hormonal system. It is just a powerful, powerful system in the body that we are learning, really learning, starting to learn a lot about. Mike had this same picture, and, and the big thing I like about this is to understand that in, in order for the digestive system to really function, the brain has to first tell the body what's going on in the intestines, what's the pH, where's the inflammation, are we hydrated, are we not hydrated, all that has to go into the brain for our brain to function and for our gut to function. If some of you guys have dabbled a little bit in nutrition and all that, Dr. David Perlmutter is a good place to start. He's most known for the book Grain Brain that kind of dives into um, our modern wheat. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But this quote, I, I'm not going to read it all, but he's basically saying our brain is not programmed to shrink and fail as we age. Okay, Our brain really, as we know it, will, will depend on how we engage it. Okay, what foods do we give it? What supplements do we get it? What activities do we give it? What emotional stress, good or bad, do we engage in on a daily basis? What are our sleep patterns? Okay, our brain recharges at night just like our entire body. So if our sleep is messed up, that's the number one thing we need to start working on to get our brain gut connection back. Um, it's very, very interesting. Every organ of our body has a time of day where it's supposed to work. We'll talk about it. The liver is one to, one to three in the morning. So if you're not asleep by 11 p.m., your liver doesn't detoxify. Your liver doesn't detoxify, we're gonna keep those toxins in us, okay? Lungs are next. Lungs, lungs try to repair from three to five in the morning. Okay, and then it goes on through there. And, and as these go on, you know, the, the small intestine, it tries to repair and do its work around three and five. And what happens between three and five usually? Is that the time of day people start to crash? Is that the time of day we run and get a pop or get a Snickers bar, right? That's our small intestine trying to repair itself and yet then we kind of punch it while it's down, okay? So everything we do has, has a, and so this is just kind of a cool slide that I like. Um, I don't know, a lot of you probably know too, there's some heart palpations. People experience some heart stuff that they've never had before uh, after a, a brain injury. They may say, Sue, I don't know, but I am sick all the time. I feel like I cannot get rid of this sinus infection. I feel like I have a lot of colds. Okay, all that stuff has kind of been involved. We are a link system, okay? Um, when everybody says, oh, you're one of those, you're like a health coach or you're holistic, and I'm like, all that means is I look at the body as a whole, right? They think it's like me eating wheatgrass in the corner. And I always say to them, I don't eat wheatgrass, I blend it so it's better. Right? So this, this is what I like about this. It affects every organ, okay? There's a reason why our insulin, okay, and our glucose and all that gets off if the pancreas is involved, okay? So I had this... Um, I was doing dishes at my friend's house on Thanksgiving and the husband was so funny, he yelled over to me, he's like, hey Sue, make sure you don't run warm water down the garbage disposal when you throw everything in there because things will get stuck and stick to the side and the pipes will get clogged. And I'm like, that's exactly what happens in our body. 
And of course they laugh because this family, they're very dear friends, but they don't, they haven't embraced how we eat. Um, and so they laugh, but it's so true. Like our body, we gotta make sure our pipes <laughs> are all open and our pipes are all working. Um, perfect example, did you guys know that you are not supposed to put noodles or rice down your garbage disposal? Raise your hand, did you know that? A few of you. Guess how I knew it? Because eight years ago, it broke and the garbage disposal man came and he's like, you're never supposed to put that stuff down there. It's like, okay. Well, same with us, right? The white pastas and the white wheat and the white sugars, they don't do well in our pipes, okay? They, they stick to the side and then as we continue to go through our life, they kind of expand. So making the area for our good food and digestion to go through smaller, um, same thing with meat. You're not supposed to put a whole lot of meat down your garbage disposal. Now, I'm not anti-meat, okay? I'm not. We, we eat meat in our family. But we got to make sure it's good quality, okay? So I am going to refer back to this because I think, I think it's a good, um, a good analogy is what, what's, what's really happening in our body. Um, there was conversations earlier. Jody talked about the lymphatic system and how the light therapy helps the lymphatic system. That's drainage. But if we're all plugged up, we can't drain. And so we walk around really tired and fatigued a lot. And yes, that's very true in, in traumatic brain injury, but are we adding to that symptoms? Okay, are we adding to those by not taking care of, of the gut so things can move through and eliminate out? This is just a cool picture that I like that you guys can look at that kind of talks about the stress reaction, what's happening in, in the brain, what's happening to the gut when it's abnormal, and what is shifting, shifting left and right. This is my slide that everyone always gets excited about. This shouldn't happen, right? So as how many of you guys, be honest, how many of you found, have found a french fry in your car on, on the floor? Right, be honest, right? Does it ever have mold on it? Right? No, but you forget about those box of strawberries that were sitting in your fridge that you paid $5.99 for, and there's mold all over. Okay? So uh, we, we just have, we have to be careful. Okay? That we, something should not last 180, 180 days. Okay? It just, and then, and then we put it in our body. No! Okay? So Mike talked a lot about our um, microbiome, okay, our gut. So the best way I like to describe our gut is a garden, okay? For how many of you guys have gardens? I know, we're getting on like seeding time inside and getting it ready to go, the greenhouses are ready. We need to treat our gut, okay, like we treat our garden. We need to give it the tools it needs, okay? The sun, or your vitamin D3, right? We need to give it hydration, half your body weight, is the number of fluid ounces a day you should consume. And that's just for normal functioning. So if you are working out, um, or if you are struggling with other health issues, you probably need to bump that up, okay? That needs to be done. You need to be done consuming that water by about four or five in the afternoon, okay? Because you don't want it to disrupt your sleep. I know a lot of people come home from work and then chug down like 64 ounces of water and they say, well, I'm up all night. Well, you should be. Right? <laughs> it's going to happen. Um, and so we need to groom it. Okay? We need to take care of it. When we do have a meal, or if we're on vacation, or if we're at some place and you're starving and there's nothing else to eat, you have to eat what's there, but then we, we have to feed it with the good stuff afterwards. Uh, we need to make sure we are getting to bed. Sleep is absolutely critical. And in our society, we seem to just push that aside. Okay, and we can't because our gut resets when we sleep, our brain resets when we sleep, and if we're not doing that, okay, then something, something is wrong. So this next si slide there, I find it very fascinating out of the Amen Clinics down um, uh, California. They are doing a lot of research right now on certain areas of the brain and certain nutritional requirements, okay? So, a lot of people with traumatic brain injuries, moderate severe, they might know the area of location, okay? So a lot of them look at it and they say, if you have a frontal or prefrontal cortex injury, we look at high intense aerobic exercise really benefits them well, okay? Really gets, really gets them going. 
we know that these people will benefit better with a high protein diet. Like I said, there's a lot of people that are looking at this research. There's not a lot of research out there right now, um, but it is in one of his in one of his books that um, the change your brain, change your life thing that that has been been nationally known. To, to really start honing in on these things. So when I say high protein, I don't mean you're taking a cheese stick and wrapping bacon around it or all those crazy stuff that's going out there right now, right? I'm talking about when you look at your plate, you have more protein on it than you may have car complex carbohydrates, okay? Or a, a fruit or, or whatever you may have on it. Um, the anterior cingulate, that is known as kind of... Um, our gear shifter in our brain and that is more lower protein and they really strive on the complex carbs for that so those are your and we'll get into the, the examples of those but those are like your sweet potatoes okay and, and your quinoa and stuff like that those people do better with with more of a complex carb okay which is going to be it come important as as we continue through this and then there, there's stuff that says um, the basal ganglia and this is the part that these people are uh, very high strung okay and they're very anxious and they have they have a lot of anxiety a lot and these people we do not want them in boot camps for exercise we do not want them doing spinning class and we do not want them heavy lifting because these people's cortisol their their stress hormone is already very very high okay these people need to be in yoga they need to be in flexibility they need to be on walks they need to just go to their garden and get exercise that way okay I think sometimes we get in a society that all of a sudden everyone's got to be in the gym working out and I feel like sometimes people have disregarded the simple exercise of just walking right so these are the people they don't need to be high intense and we don't want them high intense because we're not going to be able to calm them down as easily as we can with other people with these people we have to greatly limit their their caffeine okay greatly limit their caffeine um, and their alcohol and uh, and their sugar okay M more than other people and we'll get into the, the sugar and the caffeine and all of that so what I tell my clients is I say I want you to start with this is this meal I have today is that going to feed my inflammation or is that going to fight it okay and I we can't go from is this gonna make me thin is this gonna make me fat I hate when people talk about food that way but is it going to feed my condition okay because a lot of times I, I work with people who are post 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 injury and they have all these migraines and headaches and and sometimes we can solve and bring maybe their pain level from an eight down to a two if we address okay hydration if we address our, our our diet because sometimes we feed and increase the inflammation okay you might not know those foods right now you might not know that because I'm going to throw a slide up here in a little bit that's probably gonna shake some people that you don't know that but you we we as a whole we need to start food journaling you've got to find what your triggers are because sometimes in the nutrition world they'll say everyone's a circle and everyone's got to be in that circle there's a lot of hype right now on the ketogenic diet which is fine it might work for some people okay but the brain runs on glucose too so we've got to have some complex carbs and so you've got to find what works for you so food journaling becomes absolutely critical we all know these right you guys can get on Google right now and say top top foods for brain health okay and you'll find walnuts because they are very very powerful you'll find your blueberries your raspberries your blackberries you'll see your avocados they'll tell you your coconut oils your sunflower oils your your olive oils and your chia seeds and pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds but what a lot of people don't understand is women we should really stay away from flax seeds okay flax seeds carry an enormous amount of estrogen in them okay and in America we tend to be estrogen dominant which tends to throw our progesterone way off okay flaxseed oil is fine because it's a different protein than the actual flax seed okay so it's interesting because a lot of the big um, cereals that that they deem very healthy are really heavy in the flax seeds. so this is where it comes down to how and what makes you feel good 95 percent of your serotonin is located within the gastrointestinal tract so people feel strong emotions in their gut as well as their mind so just take when people are really anxious okay what's number one thing if someone's really anxious where do they feel butterflies in your stomach right 
Okay, so, so, so if our serotonin is in our gut, we need, to, we need to consume some complex carbs. And the only reason I, I'm spending a little bit of time on this is because there's a lot of stuff in social media right now that is knocking carbs. And they're, they're really knocking even things like, I have a friend that is on a certain lifestyle, and she says, well, I can't have carrots. And I said, really, you can't have carrots? She's like, no, because like 10 carrots is 17 grams of, of carbohydrates. And I'm like, they're carrots. They grow in the ground. Whatever grows in the ground or moves around, that's what we eat, right? And I said, they're carrots. How, well, how have we gotten to where those aren't even good for you? So we got to find what works for you. Uh, butternut squash is a really awesome choice. Pumpkin, sweet potatoes, your whole grains, your brown rice. Um, and you just have to be smart, okay, about whole grains. You know, when all these lucky charms says whole grains, that's probably not the whole grains I'm talking about. Okay, so we got to waver through marketing a little bit too, which can be hard when you're grocery shopping with kids and Elsa and Anna are all over everything. Um, and, and, and each one of my little like titles here could be probably three or four hours worth. And I'm just putting this out here because everybody is different, but for a lot of people, dairy is a trigger. A lot of people, dairy is a trigger. Okay, so um, all, the, all these big things that are put cottage cheese all over your steak. It's like, oh, please don't. Um, but dairy might be fine for you. But what I'm saying as practitioners, if you're somebody that just, you, you don't know how to get over the bump with, with your patients, start digging a little bit. Just have them. Elimination diet. Have, it take, have them take uh, dairy out one week, seven days. Seven days is all the body needs. And if it's working, day three, four, and five, they will feel terrible. Okay? They'll feel terrible? They'll feel terrible. Okay? Because okay? it's called like a Herxmeyer reaction. Okay? Where we're kind of, we're starving the body of what it wants. See, our bodies are smart. Okay? Our bodies are smart. But just by day six... They're going to feel a lot better, and by day seven, they're going to feel fabulous. Okay? Now, I caution you, don't do it all. Like, when I go through this, I have somebody that says, well, I'm ready to go dairy-free and gluten-free and wheat-free and caffeine-free and grain-free, and I'm like, don't. Because they'll do it for seven days and then fall off the wagon. Okay? So we, we create lifestyle changes. So dairy is very, very, very hard on the kidneys. Okay, and if we want to talk about detoxing the body and getting all the inflammation that we're working on from the brain to the gut, we've got to watch that. So all I'm saying in some of your patients, it could be a trigger for them. It could be a trigger for their headaches. It could be a trigger to their migraines. Not that that's what created them, but post head injury, it could be feeding the inflammation. It could be adding to their symptoms, okay? Um, Wheat, we all know that, okay? We all know it. It's kind of been uh, in, in the research in the media, but something else that might be, so our, mo our wheat that grew in the farms years and years and years ago had 12 chromosomes, okay? Our modern wheat has 62. That's how much it's been modified and changed, okay? That's like going down the garbage disposal, sticking to the edge and not letting anything else through. Okay, and then when that sticks the edge, it puts so much more stress on the other linings of the organs, and that's where we get the permeability through. Okay, um, so there's lots of different things we can do to eliminate wheat. Our family doesn't doesn't do wheat, and my girls are fine. They they're all right, right? There's well, we started when they were five and three. Okay, we do we don't do dairy and we and we don't do wheat, um, and that came through a process of my kid getting an ear infection all the time after a major holiday or after sugar or after whatever and I finally started connecting the dots so so we took it out and uh, it was fine calcium blocks the absorption of iron okay iron supplementation does not taste good so if you have somebody that struggles greatly with low iron try taking dairy out it'll naturally go up on its own it's really amazing okay wheat feeds inflammation it feeds inflammation tremendously Okay, and what people don't understand when we're looking at diet is that our, it's not our stomach that has to be upset. I could have somebody come in after a traumatic brain injury that also has um, aches and pains, uh, sinus infections, low back pain. These, these, this food can show its face in so many different ways. Okay, so many different ways. But here's a slide that's a bit controversial. 
is once we have inflammation, okay, we start creating um, certain things in our body. So there are fixed allergies and non-fixed allergies. Fixed allergies are the ones that come up positive on your test and the ones that create a reaction. Okay? Non-fixed allergies are the ones that maybe you just don't feel good after you eat. Maybe you get a little nauseous. No one's going to tell you through a blood test that you're allergic to it. But it's your job to say, all right, that doesn't make me feel well. And so I've been on this journey now three years. Uh, we changed the way, really, we really started honing in um, and changing the way we ate probably about four years ago. And I had eggs in the morning. I had my nuts and my seeds in the morning um, with my ghee or, or my Kerrygold butter. I would have my chicken over spinach or kale or whatever. And I did this for two years. And I continued to feel terrible. And I was so frustrated. And I said, I don't understand. I am following every rule in the book. Right? Until I started reading about inflammatory foods. Spinach is a highly inflammable food. Okay? Which means if, our, if their brains are already inflamed, they're, it's going to bother their gut too. Okay? And I have a lot, of, a lot of people that say to me, well, I just try to choke it down. Don't! Okay? Don't try to choke it down. Don't do it. Spinach and kale, strawberries. Okay? I had a woman that had swelling up to her knees. Okay, we cut strawberries out and in two and a half weeks the swelling was down towards her ankles and it continued to go out. Okay, beets, beets, all of these are wonderful foods and extremely healthy foods in the right body. But if we're inflamed, we got to pay attention to this stuff. Okay, so for me right now, um, I can't do eggs, I can't do spinach or kale, I can't do olives, I can't almost do that whole list. And that was my entire food okay so for me I've really had to go on this journey too and really realize oh you know after a week I'm like I'm not getting that nighttime headache anymore I'm not extremely nauseous at 10 a.m. anymore okay so I just want you to be aware of this if somebody comes back to you and says well I've been doing what you asked me to spinach salads and chicken and strawberries and I don't feel good okay then we then the, those oxalates that are in those those foods are just reacting with them and we just have to find a different path okay I'm not I'm not gonna spend long on sugar but what we know is that it is an addiction okay it's more addictive than than heroin is when you break down the chemical in the brain but here's the other thing that we need to learn about sugar because I'm not gonna talk about it because you guys all know that's why it tastes so good okay um, the thing though is if you have somebody that is severely craving sugar okay more than likely their cortisol is off okay now when I say craving sugar these are the people that physically have to have their pop in the morning okay or they have to have a Snickers bar in between and, we, and you can't break them you can't get them to eat anything salty we really it's their body telling us something okay something's out of balance a nutrient something is out of balance that we need to address okay I'm gonna step away for a second from the nutrition and talk about adrenal fatigue adrenal fatigue is huge huge okay in post-traumatic brain injuries it's at, and you need to address the health of your liver before you can address adrenal fatigue Okay, adrenal fatigue will show up in weakness, in brain fog, memory loss, uh, not being coordinated, okay? Driving around the block, not remembering what they're doing. Okay, so that, that's where this stuff can get confusing. Again, if you've got that patient and they're up against the wall and you can't get them over the hump, hey, guess what? Maybe we need to do a, a hormone saliva test okay maybe we need to check out where their testosterone the estrogen progesterone and the cortisol is the best test is a four-day cortisol four days throughout the day four different samples throughout the day because you know what we get that back and we find that the adrenal glands are crazy in the morning then we have to address that because guess what the adrenal glands produce cortisol and cortisol is our stress hormone all those symptoms right there okay are huge symptoms of adrenal fatigue but I know that a lot of them are also symptoms of, of traumatic brain injury but do we have an adrenal fatigue along the same same side as the post-traumatic probably okay so the kicker behind this one adrenal fatigue 
is that our, our adrenal glands produce cortisol. Okay, so now we're in adrenal fatigue and our cortisol is skyrocketing high. Guess what cortisol is going to start doing to the body in order for us to feed it? Sugar. And so these people are craving their sugar because their adrenal gland is struggling because it can't manage the cortisol. Does that make sense? A little bit as we go through this process, adrenal fatigue is very, very real and I think it's missing understood a lot or maybe not focused on a lot okay um, it inhibits the immune system to function hormones are huge that's how our body really runs okay so how do we know how do we know if our garbage disposal is working well or not food should provide energy it should not exhaust you okay? a lot of people will say I have to eat after I, I have to go to bed after I eat we got a problem Okay, food should be our energy source. Remember the ATP we talked about? Okay, you, you couple good nutrition with the light stuff and some other, and what you guys are already doing, and you've got a whole toolbox of stuff to start helping these people feel a little bit better. Um, if you're crashing in the mid-morning or the afternoon, something's off. We have to get a supplement in there. We've got to work on your, your um, intake. Okay, if you're waking up during the night, Okay, if you're just waking up randomly at two, three, four in the morning, that's your body telling you according to the different organs, they're having a hard time repairing something. Okay, so we, we really have to listen to our body. It's, it's, it's the time of healthcare where we start listening to our body, right? And we can start journaling and, and seeing exactly where we're at with everything. So another thing with, with clinicians, you've got to start asking these people about their bowel movements. You have got to ask them, are you constipated? Do you have diarrhea? Do you have loose stools? I know we don't like to talk about it, okay? But it should stay together and it should float, okay? And you should have two to three bowel movements a day. You should have one within the first hour of waking. If you don't have one within the first hour of waking, your liver is not, is not fully getting its detox ready to go out. First thing you do in the morning should be drink 20 ounces of water before anything else, before you get in the shower, Okay, because the minute you get in that shower and that hot water hits you, guess what? Your systems are all up and running. Okay? You'd be surprised if you just made that one change. 20 ounces of water, first thing you do when you get up. You will be surprised how much less bloating you have, how much more regular you are, and how much more your uh, elimination system will work. Okay, so how do I know that we are fully functioning? Okay, how do, how do I get my garbage disposal to where it needs to be? Okay, first of all, you need, to, you need to look at your exercise, okay? If you're in adrenal fatigue or you feel like a client is in adrenal fatigue, get them out of the gym, okay? At least get them out of the spinning and the boot camps and all that. Get them into the yoga, into the stretching, into the walking, into the biking, more of the relaxed stuff, okay? Because you're going to continue to drive that cortisol level up if you do high intense exercise with them. Um, we need to manage your stress, period. We've got to slow down, okay? If you're, if you're too late, you're running around already, that's your cortisol just on fire all day long, okay? We've got to learn to control our emotions, okay? We need to work on probably a little bit more gratitude than complaining all the time, okay? Because that too will affect your brain gut access. And that's a whole nother lecture, but emotions are very real. Okay, very real, especially in, in post-traumatic brain people, okay? They're anxious. A lot of them have some depression going on. Okay, we gotta feed grace into them. We gotta feed gratitude into them. Okay, you gotta find a way to manage that cortisol, okay? There's some great saliva tests that you can do. They're not that expensive, okay? And there's some good reliable ones that you can do and, and take care of that. <coughs> Okay, we need to get to sleep. We need to fall asleep. And this is very real. I used to, I run three businesses and I'm on the foundation. And so I used to put my kids to bed at night and work till three or four in the morning. And then I'd get up at seven o'clock, put them to bed, and then go through it again because it was nice and quiet, right? Well, no wonder I felt terrible because I was going to bed when my liver was supposed to be done working. Okay, and then my lungs were, it was a time where I could never breathe when I woke up. I was always coughing all the time. Well, there you go. My lungs are trying to repair and I was still hanging out, awake, okay? Um, we have to manage, manage our daily task, okay? We have to. We have to calm it down because an irritated brain is an irritated gut and it goes back and forth, okay? 
Um, and you've got a food journal, okay? Every one of us in here could food journal because I bet there's a few things that we could tweak, okay? A few things that we could tweak in our, um, in our own nutrition. And you have to go on what works for them, okay? A lot of people say the three big meals a day and the three small snacks. Hey, that's, that's not a whole lot. Some people, their digestive needs a break, okay? So I'm one of those people now that I go to three meals a day, and that's it. Because personally, my, I need to shut my digestion down for a while, okay? But I'm eating enough in those meals that I don't need to snack. So there's lots of different research on that. You have to find what works for you. But we also need to, at point, give the digestion a break, okay? Sometimes if you get really hungry at night, maybe have some water or have a, some tea and then go to bed, okay? So does that, that that's kind of what, what we're at with everything. And this is, I, I love this quote, never apologize for trusting your intuition. Your brain can play tricks, your heart can be blind, but your gut is always right, okay? And unfortunately, we feel the effects if our gut is right or our gut is wrong. So that's all I have for you guys. It was a lot of really fast stuff. Um, a lot of that stuff, you can really dig deep in the hormones and the different food and all that stuff. But hopefully you take away one thing um, from it. So you want to come back? Does anyone have any questions for myself or, or Mike? I think we have a couple, yeah. Okay, Mike, do you want to come up? So I have a question about CTE Hope. And first of all, thank you for bringing so much attention in Iowa to CTE and working with the foundation. That's really increased awareness significantly, so both of you. Um, is, it, is it your opinion in terms of what you've seen that the sub-concussive hits that athletes are exposed to in some sports are causing harm? So Jeff just asked, Jeff just asked if um, the, are the sub-concussive hits, are we finding that the sub-concussive hits are is the microphone on? Well, I think they're filming, so. Okay, the, are the subconcussive hits actually causing harm? And of course, I, don't, I think this, the research is showing out of Boston University that it is, uh, although I don't really necessarily think they know why. Um, this, the, the, I think the brain gut access is a, is a great, um, I wouldn't say the only solution, but I think it is a solution, uh, or, or at least a, uh, a going down the right track. Uh, I think is definitely a, um, a portion of uh, the cause. Um, it's not the only causative factor, but it, of course is there's definitely a relationship there. I also think that somehow along the process that autophagy system gets affected. So again, it's like I said before, I think it's multifactorial. Um, how many of those factors play into it? Well, then, then let me ask guess. the 800 pound gorilla question after that. Given that the federal definition of child abuse is an act or failure to act which um, presents an imminent risk of serious harm to a child. Yeah. Would you suggest that certain sports, football for example, ice hockey, uh, meet the definition of child abuse? So we, uh, we're doing a saliva study right now and we're looking at pre and post in just every athlete. So they don't even have to have a concussion. So it's going to be very interesting when we get these results back that if, if people all have a baseline and then at the end of the season they're all elevated, then we know the nature of that sport is causing an increase of inflammatory biomarkers in the brain without even, without even a proposed concussion in there. Um, that is interesting you asked that because Brenda Easter was asked that when speaking with Dr. Omalu. Um, over a radio pro broadcast and um, I would I know that n knowing what I do now I would not put my kids in that situation that's so I guess I'll ask it again do you feel like it meets the qualification of child abuse I, I say I would say no but I think a lot of people would would uh, disagree with that. That's just my personal opinion. I think if the kid wants to play sports, whether it be, you know, there's been CT that have been found in headbangers and um, uh, a synchronized swimmer has CTE, uh, although there was a extenuating circumstance outside the sport, but that's my opinion. 
Yeah, it's it's hard. So CTE Hope doesn't have a, an official uh, an official no. position. That's really no. where I'm coming from. Okay. Yeah, no, we don't. Brenda, um, uh, it was very hard for Brenda because, in a sense, she felt like she was being called that. Um, that sh she was a child abuser because of what happened to her boys and so but I see but I see where you're coming from and what what our goal at CT hope is to educate parents so they are more informed and sure. they can make an educated decision sure. but it's, I know I see, that's a hot topic right now thank you yeah anyone else yeah Yeah, I have a lot of clients that have been, um, you know, a lot of them with the autoimmune, autoimmune diagnosis is a lot of times we're finding that if you address the nutrition and address the supplementation, that sometimes the autoimmune is, um, doesn't go away, but it's completely like Crohn's. Okay, we have a lot of people that, that develop Crohn's or maybe they were on the process to Crohn's and then the brain injury occurred and then afterwards they, they've had that but I have a, a client that was diagnosed with with Crohn's and we significantly changed his nutrition and his symptoms have been dormant I guess we'll say I'm not gonna say it goes away cuz I don't research that stuff but they've been dormant for almost two years and they're not on any medication or aren't struggling with anything and, and one thing we didn't talk about at all a lot here is just proper supplementation you know a lot we do have to supplement you know, with certain things like GABA and EPA and DHA and vitamin D3, um, and just finding what really works for that person in that condition. But yes, I mean, I, I personally have had some success with that. All right. All right thank you. Thank you.